The surface planer is one of several tools you'll need in a shop if you're going to mill and square up rough lumber, but it also has a separate function, which is just to reduce the thickness of boards. And so you can use it as a thickness planer and also a surfacer. To use it as a thickness planer, it's pretty simple to operate. The basic, uh, basic way this is set up is that there's a set of blades in the middle of this housing and there's a couple rollers, and so you pass the board in, it gets grabbed by the roller, it goes under the blades, comes out on the other roller, and the blades are skimming off material as it's passing through. So it can skim off up to a sixteenth, even an eighth of an inch, that's pretty aggressive, at, at one pass. So normally what you're doing is you're passing a board through multiple times to skim off little bits of material until you get down to the thickness that you want. And the way it works is there's a crank on the side, which raises and lowers this entire housing. So that's essentially changing where the blade height is. So you need to set that up first when you're working with a board. You have to know how thick a board you have and you can measure it and set the height on, on this gauge here or you can do this by feel, which is what I, I do. I actually put it in the machine, start lowering it, and I'll feel when it starts to hit the rollers and other mechanisms underneath the housing. So when I hit the roller, I'll just back off a little bit, and then I know I'm at probably the surface of the wood at this point. So from there, I'll go a half turn, and I know I'll be taking off about a sixteenth of an inch. Now there's a couple options for setting controls on here. You can go between two types of finishes. One is called finishing cut, and one is called dimensioning. And essentially, switching between these two positions either speeds up or slows down the rollers. So you're getting more cuts per inch or fewer cuts per inch, depending on the setting. More cuts per inch make a finer finish, so you, do, you could use that for a finish cut. Another control that's pretty useful on this machine is a depth stop. And you can use this to set a depth that you don't want to go beyond. Let's say I have this board, it's one and a quarter inches. I only want to go down to an inch. It's very easy to go past an inch sometimes if you're not being careful with this wheel. What this does is it prevents this wheel from turning once it gets down to one inch. You just can't even turn the wheel anymore. So that's, that's useful. If you're not using that, just put it down to some low dimension that you'll never get to and you'll never be stopped. Now, one thing that's really important on surface planers is dust collection. These, these machines make a huge amount of dust, and this machine in particular ejects that dust at a high velocity. So that machine, the dust collector next to us, has to be on when this is on. Otherwise, you get a big mess of dust in the shop. That's it for the setup of this machine. Um, I'm gonna run this board through, and we can see how it works. One thing you'll wanna do when you're passing a board through the planer is draw some lines on it, just so you can see your progress. Sometimes the top surface of a board may have some hills or valleys, may be cupped. Um, one of the things you need to be aware of with this machine is that it only works if you have one flat face already. What happens is it references off the bottom face, which is on this bed down here, and it takes whatever it reads down there and it does it to the top face. So if you have a bow or a twist in your board, as this is passing through the planer, it's going to get pushed down by the rollers and it's just going to accentuate the shape of whatever board you have. So it's not a magic box. It doesn't just make a flat piece of wood out of a twisted one. You need to actually have one flat face before bringing your wood over here. But once you do, then you're ready to go. This machine is extremely loud and you'll want to wear ear protection when using it. That's our finished product and I wanted to run this through to show you one other thing about the planer which is something that happens a lot. It's called snipe. I don't know if you can see this but there's a, there's a slight difference in height where the planer blades have chunked out a little bit extra on these last couple inches of, this, of the wood. What happens is you're passing the wood through there, the roller grabs it and actually pulls it up into the blade. So at the beginning at the end of the cuts the roller does that, it pulls it up into the blade. You can counteract that by lifting up on the piece of wood as it's going in, 
And as long as it gets past the first roller and onto the blade, then you can let go. Same thing on the outfeed side. You want to lift up as it's coming out to make sure while it's exiting on that last roller, it doesn't get pulled up into the blade. That's it for the surface planer. The only other tool we have for milling is the jointer. Okay.